Hi, my name is Ann Cavano, and I'm a holistic educator and a Reiki master teacher. So how I got into Reiki, I was working in hospice, and I was working with a man who had gangrene on his foot, on his toes specifically. And any time the gangrene progressed, he would be in horrible pain. And I didn't know what to do. Like, I was just overwhelmed because what do you do? You know, there's not, I didn't feel like there was really anything I could do besides pray. So I would literally pray over him and I would put my hands in the air or I put my hand on his leg and um, pray. And one day I was doing this and his daughter walked in. Um, he was staying in his daughter's home. He had a room in his daughter's home. And she walked in and she said, oh my gosh, Anne, you're doing Reiki. That's so wonderful. And I thought, well, I thought I was praying, but um, she thought I was doing Reiki. And so that sort of propelled me in the direction of learning about what this Reiki was. And so today I'm going to talk a little bit about what I learned. And I'm going to teach you a little bit about what I learned about Reiki. So it's really important to me to get Reiki and the idea of Reiki and education of Reiki more mainstream because right now there's a lot of stigma around Reiki. Stigma that somehow it interferes with someone's faith or somehow that it's this woo-woo weird uh, you know alien concept but that's simply not true. When people begin to understand the physiology of the body and how the body works, then they can start to understand how Reiki can benefit the body. So our body has a natural response. The body knows how to heal and the body knows how to protect. So we have a fight or flight response and we have a rest and digest response and both of them flood the body with different hormones, okay? So when we are in a sympathetic mode, we're in fight or flight. This is when our body is overcome with hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. And our natural state is to wanna protect ourselves, right? And when we are in rest and digest, that's the natural state and homeostasis that's what we're trying to get to when we want to heal the body, when our body is in peace. We're in, when our body, the, the, blood, the blood flow slows, the heart rate slows, versus the heart rate speeding up and blood flow going to the muscles because our body's trying to fight, right? So when we are in homeostasis, which is what we're trying to achieve when we do Reiki, the body is able to heal and it's a natural ability of knowing how to heal. So how Reiki becomes beneficial to the body, Reiki is a touch therapy. Um, you can do Reiki with intention, but we'll talk about that maybe if you come to a class or something. But touch therapy is important because what happens in our system, right? As human beings, if we do not have touch, we fail to thrive. Maslow's hierarchy of needs states that without touch, we fail to thrive as human beings. And so that's why hug and cuddling and all these things we do with our loved ones and our friends create a release of oxytocin in the body. Well, Reiki also can create that same type of response within the body. So you do a hands-on therapy, our body starts to flood with this love hormone. It starts to move into a place of peace and balance and we begin to heal. That's the state that we need to be in in order for the body to do what it naturally knows how to do. It. Reiki is an energetic modality. Much like massage or other hands-on type work, you can do this for other people, but more importantly, you can learn to do it for yourself. You can promote self-care. You can add it to your self-care regimen, like other things you do, like, like meditation, like yoga. You can add in self-Reiki. So if you want to learn more about Reiki, I've been teaching for over 11 years and you can find me at lovelution.org, Lovelution on Facebook or Lovelution on Twitter. And my phone number is 480-216-6287.